My, my first public appearance, I was, I think, seven or eight at the time, and it was a, a public appearance by accident. My dad was putting up a PA system at the local gym, Canna. They used to have a, a horse show every year. And he told me to stand up in front of this thing, just a long stick with a ball on the top of it, and I didn't know what to do. So stand up there, he says, and, and catch a falling star by Perry Como. I spend the day with my radio on. I love to sing along with the songs they play. It makes the whole day seem like fun. I spend the day with my radio on. Your career um, has taken you all over the world, but how did you get on that ladder? Um, because so many people want to know, would love to have even half the career that you've had. Yeah, and it's been a career, not particularly, not a particularly spectacular career, but it has taken me. I started off in what they used to call in the 1960s beat groups. You know, show bands were show bands, and they were. Nobody likes show bands if you were cool, you know. But beat groups were the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and the Who and all these kind of places. So I said, we had a little beat group in 1964, 65. And uh, then one year, one day in 1966, this fella rang me up. He was after leasing a pub for the summer. This was 66 when the what known as the singing pub boom started, you know, uh, where people started to go into pubs to sing and to be entertained. And this fellow had leased the pub, and he had a busload of people from Belfast. This was in Bundorn in County Donegal. Yeah. Uh, but he, he said, I'm looking for somebody to, to play in the pub. And uh, we had, I remember I bought the, the Guinness Book of Irish Ballads in a, in a news agent on the way out, three of us. And we ended up playing seven nights a week, three to four hours a night in, in Bundorn for the entire summer. But in 1968, I got the first job, my first uh, full-time job with the Electricity Supply Board, or the ESB as we know it here. And um, uh, the very first night I was there, somebody brought me to this bar called Slattery's in Cable Street in Dublin. I was working in Dublin. And I heard uh, Indian Pipes for the first time. And there was Liam Oak of Flynn, believe it or not, playing in a pub in those days. Donald Lunny was there, Al O'Donnell, Paul Brady was even there. And I kind of known Paul Brady from from because he used to play in the pubs in Mondorn when we play, where we played, and I I as soon as I heard Al O'Donnell playing the acoustic guitar, I said because I was had an electric guitar previous to that, I said I have to get so I rang my dad the next day and said Dad I have I need money badly and I and I wanted to buy an, an acoustic guitar. He didn't even know what acoustic guitar was, but he, how much was it? Was twenty nine pounds. <laughs> I bought the, this a Yamaha acoustic guitar in, a, of all things, a Yamaha shop, which sold, also sold motorbikes as, and pianos and, uh, and guitars. So that's where my first guitar came up. And that led me on a journey, just literally, um, totally learning all the different finger picking styles and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know? But with technology now, um, you know, I'm doing a lot of co-writing. This during this pandemic, I've been writing people with from all over the place. Um, I've written people with people in Vietnam, um, in America, uh, because it's such a small world now. Uh, for example, I, I wrote a lovely uh, song with a, a lady called Tao and Yuen. She's Vietnamese, living in Frankfurt, and I, I, I came across her, her. Her she writes television music, you know, um, themes for television so, so, stuff like that. And I came across her music on, on on one of the social networks, and I said. You know, I'd love to write with her. And I just clicked on the button and said, you know, do you fancy writing a song? And, uh, you know, the song has been recorded now by many artists over here. You know, it's called I Wish I Was a Child Again. I Wish I Could Be a Child Again. You're listening to the radio and if the song doesn't catch you within the first 10 seconds, you can switch a button and it's gone somewhere. You've gone somewhere else, you know. So we, the first 10 seconds are very important. You know, so I'm trying to get, get the first 10 seconds over and then the rest is, is easy. You, um, you did something that was very different. You managed to win the biggest song contest in the world at the time and still is um when you were going against the grain musically of what was what was out there you were you were it was a simple stripped back song that touched uh, and impacted people's hearts and minds when you talk about the first 10 seconds uh what was there a lot of work in preparation for that song to make it just grab people straight away well somebody asked Mar o'connell one time you know how, how she prepares for her singing how does she, you know, what kind of vocal exercises she does? And she just went, <coughs> I do that, and then I'm done. But it was something similar with, with, with rock and roll kids. Um, 
the preliminary rounds were on television here, and I, I met Paul, Paul Harrington on the Saturday afternoon. Uh, we sat down and we spent an hour, uh, and uh, it, whatever fell under our, ha our hands on the piano or the guitar, we did the show that night, and we never did anything. We never did any rehearsal of any kind, other than the stuff that was forced on us in the week of Eurovision. You had to sort of be in a certain place at a certain time, but. Um, we never ever have played it the same way twice. There's always a little kink somewhere or a little show off bit. Paul said, "You wouldn't hear this, you know, in the middle of the song, <laughs> you know." So it's one of those. I mean, again, it's got a, such a hook that, that people people love it. I couldn't believe it. It was voted the best Irish uh, Eurovision winning song uh, since we. Like, I was kind of chuffed about that because not Johnny Logan off his off his throne. Number sixty-two. I was sixteen and so were you. And we lived next door on the avenue. Jerry Lee was big and Elvis too. Blue jeans and blue suede shoes, and we never knew what life held in store. We just wanted to rock and roll forevermore. Rock and roll was all we did And listening to those songs on the radio I was yours and you were mine That was once upon a time Now we never seem to rock and roll anymore But my grandson Porrick is a guitar player and singer, he's 16 now and he started to come out and sing a lot of song with me on concerts and stuff like that. And uh, he knows, because of the fact he's had the discipline of learning the violin and playing in an orchestra he, at, a, at a, a very young age, he knows that it involves really, really hard work. And uh, I think ask any band or anybody, even in today's th thing, you need to work at it. It's something you will only get by, by having the experience and having the down. I mean, I've been booed off stages and, and all kinds of things down through the years. I've played in bars where not a sinner was listening. So you, you learn from everything, you know, and it's work, 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 